Within the next 72 hours, I'm going to try and make $1,000 in New York City. When I was first on my own, I did odd jobs from being a burger delivery boy, to random modeling jobs, to pretty much anything I could come up with to make some extra cash. And now in the next month, I am going to be announcing my new business, so I wanted to put myself to the test and see if I could somehow come up with $1,000 in three days. Five cents. So I hit on my buddy Gabe for a hand to help me figure out how in the world I am going to complete this mission. So I'm here with Gabe, who is the master at odd jobs here in New York City. I've been a taxi driver, a pizza man, I've served coffee and donuts out of a street car, I've hung off of buildings as an extreme tour guide, you name it, pretty much I've done it. So I brought Gabe here to help me configure a plan to try and make this $1,000 in three days. Makeup artist? Makeup artist. Should you hire me to do your makeup? Hell no. <laughs> what I'm trying to find is like something that's more freelance based for you. Voiceovers. Voiceovers. So here we have Gabe. Gabe is a little boy from New York, and he today is going to be on an adventure. Is that not like a fairy? That's a fairy tale voice right that's there. That's what's going for a little Dr. See? Seuss. See? Okay. This is the game plan. So we need to figure out a way to have our money work for us to make more money. But the only problem is right now we have zero money. But then once we figure that out, we can then use the money we make to buy goods to flip to make even more money and start getting this cash. So if I was ever in a pinch for money, the first thing I would do is do Uber Eats. It's super easy to sign up. It may take about 24 hours to get vetted and approved, but once you do, you download the Uber driver app and you're good to go. I did this about two years ago in a previous video and made like 140 bucks in a couple hours. So let's see what we could do here in 2023 with a faster bike. All right, $9.31, tap to accept. All right, we're in business. Wow, and we can add another delivery for $6.49. They don't call money making Manhattan for nothing. Thank you. This really is not a bad gig. You're getting paid to go around exploring the city and cruise around on the bike. We're off to a great start too, so let's keep this going. Keep ripping every bag. That's my old detail apartment. This delivery is a six story walk up. I thought that was illegal in New York. This is kind of like a game of chess because you have to think first before you click accept. And you have to calculate how much you're gonna make and if it's worth it within like five seconds before the trip goes away. So so many times I'm trying to think about if I should accept and then it's already gone. Like this one, 23 minute trip for $4. Gonna pass on that one. So right now we are in between the prime lunch hours and also the prime dinner hours. So I figured I could do the best job and side hustle you could do here in New York City, which is dog walker. So there is this app called Wag Carrier where if you sign up and pay 80 bucks in a vetting process that you then are registered to be able to walk all the dogs in New York City. And there are some pretty dang good boys here. I have done this before. I am already vetted, which does take a couple days. So we are all set. And today we have two walks. We're gonna be walking Nigel, who I've done before, as well as another dog, Sonny. So Nigel, let's get walking. Let's go, Nigel. Guys, I cannot believe what just happened. So I walk another dog, and as I'm doing that, I bump into a really kind subscriber that says hello, and I go to shake his hand. And within that split second, I look back down, and the dog is miraculously Harry Houdini and off the leash. I start freaking out. I drop my camera on the ground as the subscriber was kind enough to help me as I'm pinning the dog on the ground to get it back leashed up. So I think that is going to be enough dog walking for today. But now that the sun has set and it is about to be dinner time, I think this is the perfect opportunity to finish up the day strong with some more Uber Eats. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. So after a long 10 hours of work and completing day one, we have a grand total of 
$211. Dang, I was really hoping it'd be more than that. It's not a terrible start, but we have a lot of work we gotta do tomorrow. So right now I am doing some job postings on Craigslist where even I posted about being a mover for tomorrow as well as even a dishwasher. And another one that I used to do back in the day was I used to shoot people's dating profile photos for like 80 bucks in a half hour session. So planting a seed and tomorrow we do have an early morning with a moving job. It's honestly a lot harder than I was expecting. So this should be fun. So today we have a very early morning start and also a freezing one. It is currently 26 degrees outside and we are about to bike all the way to Brooklyn to do a moving job. Being a mover was actually one of my first ever jobs that I had here in the city and I do think people will be pretty surprised how much you can make. It is a strenuous job, but at least you do make some pretty good money. All right, we're on the clock, so let's get to Brooklyn. job I'm doing today is with a company called Otter. I was connected to the owner, who's like a super nice guy, he agreed to give me a job for the day. So let's get to work. So this is our office for today, and we got our uniform. Awesome. Oh, a shirt and a hoodie. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's good, right? <laughs> Woo. All right. Let's do this. So I truly clocked in for this and put in blood, sweat, and tears into this move. Moving in a home in the suburbs can be difficult enough, but there's nothing more chaotic and stressful than moving in a New York City apartment up a four-story walk-up. But you know, after a little while, I'm not gonna lie, it actually turned out to be quite fun. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> It's like a Christmas present. Yeah. On a quick little five minute break right now. And I forgot how intense moving can be. Luckily I didn't go to the gym this morning because I feel like I can barely feel my arms now. That was nice. Get a great workout and get some great cash. But the thing that has been tough is that this apartment does not have an elevator in it. So there's these really tiny narrow staircases that we have to carry everything down. This is a really humbling experience. So much credit to all the movers out there. Next time I, I hire a company definitely gonna tip them well. Okay, so we finished packing up the truck. Now time to take the hot rod off the new place. What's your favorite part about being a mover? We don't have like strict hours from nine to five. Sometimes we finish at 12 o'clock and make wow. good money. Sometimes, of course, we stay all day for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to us. I mean, how fast we are, that's how fast we will finish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Vlad, so how did you get started as an owner of a moving company here in New York City? Yeah, so I picked up a job uh, you know, as a mover for a summer just while I was looking for something else. Got the job in sales for a moving company and uh, did that for a couple of years. Then saved up some money and bought a truck and uh, started my own business. How much can someone, not as the owner of a company, but a mover, I know you told me over the phone, but can you tell the audience how much can a mover make on average here in the city? We do revenue sharing uh, because we want the movers to be paid for all the hard work. So on a good day, you could get maybe four or $500. On an average day, maybe 200. It really depends on the tips a lot too. And as you guys can see, Otter does an amazing job. So if you guys are looking to move here in the city, highly recommend supporting Vlad. Call. Yeah, give him a call. <laughs> we'll leave a link down below. And also shout out to Vlad for letting me do this and film this. And also we got so lucky that the people we were moving were so kind, let us film everything. So thank you so much for thank the you. job. Thank you for helping out. <laughs> so after day two, we now have a grand total of $561. Dang, we're really gonna need to make a lot of money tomorrow. I did want to say how whether it is financial struggles or relationship problems that we've all been there. And the one thing that has helped me has been today's sponsor, BetterHelp. So I truthfully am a BetterHelp customer and do therapy at least once every other week. And it's great. I started it when I went through a bad breakup about two years ago, but even to today, I still do it and it has just overall improved my mental health and clarity significantly. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible and easy to find the best therapist most suitable for you. I do truthfully recommend trying out therapy for yourself with BetterHelp. So if you're going through something, consider online therapy with BetterHelp by going to betterhelp.com slash or going to the link 
down below. Clicking that link does help support me in this channel, but also gives you guys 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can try it out, connect with a therapist, and see if it helps you. Okay, now time to get some sleep because tomorrow we have a very, very big day. So this is my buddy Mikey, who I went to business school with. And Mikey is a master when it comes to Amazon and selling things online. So Mikey, give a, a quick little introduction of yourself. I was born in Venezuela. My father comes from an entrepreneurial background. He had a bunch of stores uh, in Venezuela, women's clothing. We came to Miami, we came to the United States, and that's when he opened up another women's store. A couple years later, I was playing baseball. I played baseball growing up. And yeah, I, Mikey and I went to college together and he played on the baseball team. Yeah, go Jaspers. So <laughs> yeah, I decided I wanted to start my own business, uh, selling online e-commerce, all sporting equipment and everything. And that's where I'm at. So Mikey now essentially runs a company called The Baseball Club. And he is able to sell gloves, bats, everything baseball on his Amazon storefront. So today, Mikey is going to help me do a thing called Amazon Retail Arbitrage. Mikey, how much do you think we can make in one day, starting with around 500 bucks? Uh, I'm gonna go big here and I think we can double it up what? real quick. I think we can double it up. All right, if we can make a couple hundred bucks, I will be ecstatic, but let's see what New York City's got in store for us. Literally, let's see what they got in stores for us. <laughs> So our first spot for today is a TJ Maxx and a Marshalls here on 19th Street. Mikey, can you break down a little bit more of how this works, the Amazon Retail Arbitrage? We're gonna scan products. You're gonna see if it makes a profit, if it doesn't make a profit. So there's an app that anyone can download and use and you can scan any barcode that's universal. So, so the Amazon seller app, you can scan it and it will show you. You can even scan it on Amazon itself, the app, and you'll see the product if it sells or not. Now there's other programs that you can, other apps that you can pay, you can pay for monthly and stuff like that. Those tell you more information of how much it sells, how many sellers are on it and stuff like that. That's when you get a little more into it. But with the Amazon, seller app that's all you really need to start with it'll tell you immediately how much uh, it costs you what the profit is what the revenue is and all that stuff so now our objective is to get in there start scanning There's two bros in New York City shopping, shopping, shopping spree Okay, so we thought we hit the jackpot, but after packing all of these crocs thinking we just made hundred and sixty dollars We were a uh, croc blocked We've been croc blocked. So we realized that you unfortunately need to get approved to be a Crocs reseller on Amazon, which is not complicated, but could take a while. So we kept the treasure hunt going. Mikey, we're supposed to be working, not, you're not supposed to be shopping for yourself. So we found another winner, which is Bob's. And they are shoes, so it's gonna be a lot more difficult to ship. But Mikey was telling me how he's gone to stores, found winners like this, and just yeah, wiped out the entire it. store. They, they, there's double or triple of this, and you just put them on your car or whatever, however you can get them. We're gonna go with three pairs. We could technically take all of them, but just because we are gonna be having to uh, city bike home, this is what we're going with. So we were making a few bucks here and a few bucks there. Some may say we were in despair, but that was all until we found underwear. Ooh, look at that. We just hit the underwear jackpot. I might keep a pair for myself. These are nice. Let's get these. <laughs> so now to end and spend the rest of our money that we have, we hit the Coca-Cola jackpot. We're gonna spend about $200 to make $100 profit. These things should sell pretty quick, but the only issue is they're pretty big. So we're gonna have a, a fun commute back home. We made it outside, not empty handed. And we gotta walk a decent amount now back to my place where we're gonna start shipping this out to Amazon. Oh, this is a good workout though. <sighs> So guys, what a day. After spending $353, we are able to turn that into a profit of 313 bucks. And now Mikey, the expert, is gonna break down the procedure of how we go about shipping this to Amazon. We got a heat gun. And a knife. And that's pretty much all you need. That's all you need. All right, let's get to it. Also guys, for the purpose of this video, we are going to calculate the profits as if we sold everything. As Mikey was explaining, it does sometimes take a little bit for something to sell. This really is such a hack. I felt like we just robbed Marshalls. If you're looking for some cash, you wanna make it happen, this is really, you're always gonna find a profit somewhere. 
So now we only have $152 left to go on this challenge. It's gonna be very intense since it just started raining out. We are taking this challenge very seriously and rain or shine, just like the other workers who do these jobs. We gotta get out and get busy. So now Gabe and myself are about to go get dirty. Gabe, what are we about to do? Well, we're gonna go collect cans and bottles. Yep. And see how much money we can make. Right, and Gabe. Gotta love New York, yep. baby. Please pardon the interruption. And Gabe was able to connect me with a guy that does this professionally and surprisingly makes some good money out of this. So, Gabe, let's go meet out with John and do some recycling. Let's go find John. How's it going? I'm Brett. I'm John. Bless you, man. Pleasure to meet you. Those eyes, you've been killing girls with those eyes for years. <laughs> murderer. You're a murderer. <laughs> so we get to knowing John, and he started telling us stories from his childhood and even getting shot with a freaking bow and arrow. Look, Jeez. and they and had to cut out like half of my titty. John, so we're oh, going to. Are you recording? <laughs> I didn't even realize that. This is just how you are normally. Praise God. This is just who I am. I'm sorry. So we you wanna... want me to behave differently? No, 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 be oh. yourself. You got great personality. <laughs> but we want to work with you to help you collect some cans today. And I was wondering how much, if you don't mind sharing, on an average day, on a good day, how much could you make collecting cans, you think? Five years ago, I made $200. Busting my ass, 10, 11 hours, picking up cans in bottles. It's a lot of money. It's a paycheck. Yeah. Gabriel, you know that we come out here every week on Friday afternoon, and we pick up. Yep. You've seen the millions of piles of bags. Yep. But now the law changed and everybody's getting penalized for taking out the garbage too early because you can't take it out before eight o'clock because of the rat law. No pickup here until tomorrow, six o'clock in the morning. So you come all the way down here, pay whether mind it's the you, subway or whatever, wheel this down here to now learn that you're not gonna be able to collect cans. And the worst thing is, I want to file a lawsuit because there's a BP gas station on FDR and 23rd Street that charges you $5.99 a gallon for the gas. I bought the van. I don't have $5.99. I have $6 to my name. I thought I was going to get a couple of gallons. So right now, they usually are able to collect the cans from this building, but they were just informed that they're not bringing out the cans and now we're not gonna be able to collect them. Or you just have to come back at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I think the challenge is done by then though. So uh, even though we did not hit our goal, we did come close and I am proud of how far we come. But this experience has just been so humbling, even getting to meet people like John who do this every day. I knew I wanted to give the money that we earned from this challenge to someone that deserves it. And I don't think there's anyone more deserving than John. So just went and got a thousand bucks and we're gonna surprise him with this cat. This is a tough job, so what motivates you in the morning to wake up and be able to get out here and collect cans every day? It's not really a motivation. It's a scheduled process whereby I can make a few dollars to eat and pay some bills. You have to pay to live. You can't live for free. I came from the very, very top and fell all the way, not only to the bottom, but I'm in the valley. I tell you what, it's not really a bad place because in the valley, you learn a lot of lessons. You learn how to be patient. You learn how to be kind. You learn how to humble yourself because in the valley, you don't have nothing. There's no grapes, no olives, no food, no nothing. So in the Bible, hold on, you want this. Let me take, can I take out my sword? You got a sword on you? I got a sword. Don't get scared when I take it out, right? <laughs> I got a sword carry the Bible on you? This whole time you had that in your back, like a magic trick. No, it had me. What would you say is your number one goal in life? My number one goal in life would be to be able to make my children and grandchildren, now that I'm so old, proud of me. How? I haven't a clue. But I think the sword, the word of God, is I really believe that's the answer. I'm sure your kids are proud of you because I even am so inspired by your story and I feel like you prove what being a man is and being able to provide for your family by any means necessary. 
and we wanted to give you a little something. No, so come on! Here's... No! <laughs> come on, man! No, 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 no! No way! Come on, man! No, 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 no! I can't do it. Trying to make this $1,000 in 72 hours in New York City was truly way more difficult than I thought. And made me give a lot more credit to those who deliver food, our movers, and especially people like John. Even though we unfortunately didn't make our $1,000 goal, it made me want to help out John even more after realizing how difficult working jobs like a can collector can be. This will be my last video for 2023 and wanted to wish you all a happy holiday and new year and I can't wait to bring you along for a new series I will be launching starting my new business. Until then, let's get out and get busy in the next one.